Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 5 of chapter 1b. We are still in introduction, fracture, fatigue and creep. We will of course start by reviewing what we did in the last lecture, lecture 4. Then before starting today's lecture, I will solve the quiz 1 for you so that you have some understanding of where you went wrong or if you did everything right. We will continue with the discussion of fatigue crack propagation rate and we will discuss in detail how do we do the fatigue life calculation right it's a long discussion and then at the end of that long discussion we will actually do the fatigue life calculation with a large example and then we will start the other part that this fatigue and fracture side is done and now there is the other type of loading called creep which is a constant stress and temperature with time right so this is what we will cover in today's lecture let us then quickly look at what we covered last time in lecture 4 of uh, chapter 1b we uh, did this example on fatigue where stress amplitude is given and endurance limit is involved we what is the area what is the force how will you solve it and finally what is the diameter of the uh, rod required for the stress amplitude or the life and so on then we started discussing the structural changes that happen during the fatigue process crack initiation slip band crack growth also known as a stage one fatigue crack growth a stage two crack growth and ultimate ductile failure we showed you a picture a micrograph of we then discussed the factors that affect the fatigue strength of a material a stress concentration surface roughness surface condition which means nitriding carburizing and those type of surface improving operations the environment which can cause f uh, corrosion and corrosion fatigue we talked of how to improve the fatigue life uh, one method was to impose a compressive stress because compressive stresses close down the crack one practical method in that is short peening one of course is improving the surface roughness of the material by carburizing nitriding and so on the other is during the design by removing stress concentration factors by uh, not having sharp corners but having fillets and radiuses and so on after that uh, we started the main discussion of fracture mechanics fatigue crack propagation rate the rate at which a fatigue crack grows we showed you the direct current electrical potential crack monitoring system where it is like a fracture toughness testing machine you have the compact specimen and the fatigue loading system and so on but you also have measurement system in terms of electrical voltage at the nano or micro volt level of course where you will measure the growth of the crack in millimeters or whatever it's a very complicated high cost machine of course and once that measurement is available that if we can practically measure that as we keep on applying loads then with number of cycles number of fatigue cycles how does the crack grow then we can start formulating the fatigue crack growth rate right fatigue crack growth rate da dn change in crack size respect to uh, with respect to change in number of cycles applied so fatigue crack growth rate and we told you that they found uh, this is the foundation of the Paris law or the Paris Erdogan law that the fatigue crack growth rate is a function of the applied stress and the existing crack and we can convert these two into the stress intensity k1 because we know that k1 is sigma root pi a right and so 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 this was then the equation the Paris Erdogan law the famous equation of fatigue crack propagation DADN 
is some constant a delta k raised to m delta k is the stress intensity range the maximum stress intensity minus the minimum stress intensity that happens due to, during the fatigue loading fatigue load goes up and down up and down up and down so what is the maximum stress intensity and then what is the minimum stress intensity that is the delta k a and m are material constants whichever steel or whichever other metal alloy we are using it will have a different set of values for a and m and d a d n of course a is the existing crack size n is the number of cycles so d a d n is change in the crack size we showed you this graph that if you make the equation uh, of d a d n is equal to a delta k raised to m and on this side then you have the crack length and on that side you have this so you you will have this uh, curve and so uh, we then told you that uh, to find the values of the constants a and m we can linearize the equation by taking log log of both the sides and plotting it as a straight line and then the slope of the straight line is the value m and then we can find the other constant a then uh, on the next page we will show you uh, the real experimental graph where there is region 1 2 so this is a real graph for uh, of course here we are saying that it is a 533 b1 steel it is one type of a steel its yield strength is this its test conditions are that the stress range, uh, ratio is 0.1 and it is ambient temperature and so on so here we are plotting dadn rate of crack growth in millimeters per cycle or in inch per cycle here it is the stress intensity factor range delta k megapascal root meter or ksi root inch so there is region 1 region 1 there is region 2 and there is region 3 and region 2 is the main region where the straight line equation is there the dadn is equal to c delta k n or a delta k m equation and this was the last slide that now if you want to do fatigue life calculations then how should you proceed right so this was what we did in the previous lecture let us now start uh, what we want to do today so we proceed with today's lecture before going to the uh, technicalities uh, this announcement i have already sent you an email uh, there is a clash free timetabling for mechanical engineering department so that all midterms in the department do not have any clash according to that week 7 tuesday you have your midterm week 7 is 27 october and it starts at the class time right we will try to finish from 12 to 2 but we will see what will be the exact coverage of the midterm we will let you know as the lectures go along okay it might be till the next lecture it might be the lecture more than that right so we will see because uh, if it is going to be in week 7 then most probably the last lecture of week 6 will be the coverage but we will cover that later on before we proceed with uh, today's lecture uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, some part of the solution of quiz 1 uh, of course there are lots of different multiple choice questions i am taking only a few here as an example uh, there were more and there will be more always uh, and so on so the main reason for sinking of the ship titanic was lack of knowledge about ductile to brittle transition fatigue theory impact loading material science all the answers are correct right all the answers are correct but in mcqs uh, if you see the first line always uh, the best answer the best answer you see knowledge about fatigue theory was important knowledge about impact loading was important knowledge about material science was important but the one thing that was the critical crux of why it failed was ductile to brittle transition right so this is your answer engineering failure refers to the inability of a material or component to do what now again uh, if it was a class 
I would ask you, I would show you only the question and I would ask you before going further. Right. So, uh, is it all the answers given? Is it that failure to perform intended function? Failure to meet performance criteria? Failure to perform safely and reliably? Can you say that any of these means engineering failure? Yes. You see, if it does not do what function it was to do, the part has failed. If there were certain performance criteria that it will do function, but do it with this performance, light will be so much, heat will be so much. So if it does not meet the criteria, even though it functions, it has still failed. If it can function, it can meet the criteria, but it is not safe and reliable. It does not have any life. It fails very quickly and it is not safe. Then also it is engineering failure. So engineering failure is all of these. So, so the answer is all three, right? The answer is all three. Ductile fracture is accompanied by what? Large plastic deformation, little or no plastic deformation, catastrophic failure, infinite life. You see whether it is ductile failure or it is brittle failure. Failure has been there. So there is no infinite life, right? So this is out. Catastrophic failure, sudden failure happens in purely brittle materials. So this is out. Little or no plastic deformation is for normal brittle materials, not perfectly brittle, normal, little or no plastic deformation. And of course, ductile means very large plastic deformation. So large plastic deformation is your answer, right? 